Hello, and welcome to this introduction to yeast video. Here you'll be provided with a brief and basic overview of this microorganism that our species has been infatuated with. Yeast is recognisable as the thing which literally gives rise to bread. However, that is amongst the least of its roles within our modern world. Wikipedia provides a summary of this single-celled microorganism of the fungus kingdom. But for us, yeast is interesting in that our species has no interest in the fruiting body, as is the case with mushrooms, but in two byproducts, specifically fermentation and ethanol production. These two functions have significant historical and cultural value. Yeast has a large place in our history, where it is tied into the rise of civilizations, cultures, religions, and economies. Yeast is essential to beer, and beer in turn has significance to our species, examples of which can be estimated as far back as 9500 BCE. It held great importance to the Egyptians 5000 years ago, it provided a potent source of carbohydrates and therefore energy, and sedated the working population of a knight. This enabled massive and significant examples of civil works that we are admiring even today. It was also offered to the dead and the afterlife. This is seen in urns of beer within tombs. In the late medieval period, it was entrenched in Western society and produced some of the first food quality laws. These were called the German Beer Purity Laws and are still in effect today. But beer is no longer treated as the special social or cultural product that it was, but has become the product and beverage of the working class. On the other end of the spectrum lies wine. Wine is a symbol of the wealthy and influential over the course of history. Empires have risen on the backs of the wine-making industry, and specifically the wine-drinking elite. The Roman Empire put great value on wine. Our perception of wine as a luxury item has led to its current high price, symbolism, and some, and some of our species' most creative applications in an effort to produce this luxury item. Wine is almost universal, with various formats derived from milk, fruit and grains, such as rice. It is a symbol of our species' desire and creativity in making alcohol. Unlike the luxury of wine, there are more immediate demonstrations of our cohabitation with yeast over the years. Bread has historically held great social significance. The Roman Empire implemented the first form of public welfare with a daily distribution of bread to anyone who applied. This was a form of welfare and a symbol of where bread fit into society. A smaller weight of wheat could be extended by yeast to be filling and still provide a substantial amount of energy, thereby keeping the population productive, and like beer, assisted the Egyptians in being a productive, powerful civilization. So far, yeast has been shown in a limited capacity, but we have had ample opportunity to, to select, optimize, and specialize yeast in the last 12,000 years. Seen here is the humble baker's yeast. It does one thing, ferments to form CO2. This gives rise to the bread, a straightforward use and product. Mix flour, yeast, and water. Wait, and then bake. But we have had time to further specialize yeast. Seen here are a variety of specialized wine yeasts that reduce the variability of products, take better advantage of the available resources, and more. This is just a snapshot of what we have developed. We now have beer and cider yeasts alongside wine yeasts, splitting the seemingly limited function of yeast along even more obscure lines and functions. So as we produce more and more specialized yeasts, you might wonder why and how this has happened. Yeast products are more varied and came about more ways than you might think. Seen here are two familiar products, bread and wine. What you may not realize is that preserved foods like salami and yogurt are related to yeast. Yeast and fermenting creates an environment that is inhospitable to other microorganisms such as E. coli and salmonella, and every culture and society has embraced this differently. Kimchi as seen here is an example of a social and cultural specific use of yeast to ferment foods. It takes full advantage of the strengths and weaknesses of yeast. A low oxygen environment enables fermentation, removes the remaining oxygen and available foodstuffs from other bacteria. Similar ideas are found internationally. These include natto, 
a form of fermented soybean, sauerkraut, a form of fermented cabbage, Worcestershire sauce, a form of fermented sauce. Although individually created, there is a more international concern, and that is fuel. Ethanol is a byproduct of fermentation and a viable alternative fuel to petroleum based products. Ethanol is made by reducing waste products down to simple sugars, which are converted into ethanol. This is separated, filtered, and refined for use as a fuel. Unlike fossil fuels, it is renewable and sustainable, whilst being largely interchangeable as a fuel in most modern vehicles. This would facilitate a longer time frame for conversion to a more sustainable vehicle type. Alternative fuels are not, are not applicable to everyone. What is relevant to everyone is things like medication. Take the insulin pitched as an example. Insulin was derived from pigs initially. This led to host rejection, loss of efficacy, and other complications. By producing insulin in yeast, it can be refined and purified for use in humans with greater efficacy and fewer complications. Yeast also produces the hepatitis B antigen and lysine and used by many people. Although you may think yeast is only relevant to beverages, bread and food, it does more. In a later video I will cover the role of yeast in both pathology and food spoilage. Thank you for watching. Please click the links throughout the video in the description or the comments section to see all the original sources or linked videos if you want more information.